Saravali joining us from his home out in Pennsylvania. He is about to hit the road again and get down to Sunrise, Florida for game five of this Stanley Cup final. And Frank, two, 48 hours ago, I would say, really didn't feel like you were going to be making that trip back down. Uh, did not. Did not get a sense from the Oilers, body language-wise and everything else, that game four, hey, if you told me they won, again, wouldn't be shocked. But winning eight to one? No. Didn't have that on my bingo card. It was pretty uh, pretty significant. A uh, couple of the big drivers of that victory, especially in the first period, were Connor Brown and Matthias Janmark. Obviously, Janmark buries the big shorty. Brown made a great play there. Then Janmark makes a really, really strong play, setting up Adam Henrique for the second goal, which really got that building into a frenzy. Have Connor Brown and Matthias Janmark worked their way into being locks to return next year? Are these two guys that the Oilers need to seriously look at bringing back? Well, I think the Oilers are already looking really hard and long at bringing back Yanmark. I think that's certainly toward the top of their priority list. It's, you know, you've got to figure out the dry cycle situation first and get that taken care of. We talked a couple of days ago about how those discussions are already underway, but Yanmark has been such a good fit. And by the way, is there, is there a better name or nickname going than the janitor? Like it perfectly describes him in every term. He's there to to clean up the mess. He's always Johnny on the spot. I mean, it's perfect. Can't think of anything better than Matthias Janmark and the janitor. And by the way, you mentioned on your Twitter feed the other day, I'm going to tell my grandkids about the Matthias Janmark game. Yeah. And I was going to reply and say, do you realize this is a guy that scored a hat trick in a game seven? Uh, <laughs> but this is an Edmonton centric show. Yeah. Um, for maybe Matthias Janmark, that wasn't the Matthias Janmark game, but for Oilers fans, that was, that was the Matthias Janmark game. And when you said you were a fan of the nickname, I thought you were going to say you were a fan of the joint nickname that him and Connor Brown have of Brown Mark. I, I think that one's pretty good. No, no, <laughs> no selling. That's, that's a really bad portmanteau. Uh, I don't even know what that means, but a portmanteau okay. is, is the technical def It's the word that describes two words being amalgamated and put together. Oh, I thought you said poor man's toe. <laughs> nope. Bit of a mix up there. Yeah. All right. Speaking of poor man's toe. So an example of a portmanteau is brunch, breakfast, and lunch. Brown, Yanmark, brown mark. We're learning a lot today. Yeah, who would have thought? Um, a motel. Uh, motor up the... to a hotel. Motel. Oh. I never even thought about it that no, way. No, I never thought about that Have one. you ever heard of a spork? I've heard of a spork. And a fork? Mm -hmm. A that's, grapple? That's a portmanteau. P-O-R-T-M-A-N-T-E-A-U. Portmanteau. Liger. You were somehow going to spin that into a Matthew Kachuk question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Matthew Kachuk, was he at one point, I think, so far in this series? What yeah. have you kind of seen from him that the what the Oilers have been able to do to prevent him from getting going? I don't know if it's so much the Oilers or if it's just Matthew Kachuk hasn't been nearly as engaged as a lot of people expected him to be. Um, it's definitely been a disappointing cup final for him. And I would say that I brought this up on Daily Faceoff Live today, Tyler. If we had gotten to a point where the Panthers are up 3 nothing in a Stanley Cup final and you told me in April that Matthew Kachuk wouldn't be one of the three guys that we're talking about, I'd be like, huh? What? There's no chance that that happens. Um, and yet for a guy that has nearly a point per game in the, in the playoffs, he hasn't been one of the key true driving forces in this series that kind of made their lead maybe even a little bit more surprising. Yeah, it has been surprising to see how quiet he was. And when you said it on DFO live, I didn't have a chance to get to it on that show, but someone commented and said, Oh, he had a beautiful setup on the Reinhardt goal, and you, you're overlooking his back check on McDavid. He's been impactful in this series. You just aren't noticing it. And it's like, if you're now through four games and yeah. your two most memorable moments as a high-paid superstar player are a back check and an assist, that right there is pretty damning. I'm yeah. not willing to give him too much credit for that. And to be honest, you could have the same discussion about Leon Dreisaitl. Absolutely, you yeah. can. And I do think a big decider going forward here is you know, if Florida can get a big bounce back from Matt Kachuk and I mean bounce back, I should call it more of an arrival from Matt Kachuk in this series and maybe a bounce back from some other big guns like Forsling and Ekblad on the blue line. 
then they're going to be in a great position to win game five. If Edmonton can go and get an arrival from Zach Hyman and Leon Dreisaitl, then I think you suddenly start to like their chances more in a game five. I do think whichever power, whichever side's power comes through more is going to be, you know, a step ahead in, in a deciding fifth game. Yeah. Yesterday we talked about why yesterday. Well, today we'll talk about how and how is exactly what you just talked about. How do the Oilers pull this off? Zach Hyman has a 40% lead on the goal scoring department in the entire postseason. The fact that he doesn't have one in this final is a little bit shocking. Mm -hmm. Ryan Nugent Hopkins has been extremely quiet and the power play is still one for 16. So if you're looking for game breaking reasons as to why or how the Edmonton Oilers are going to pull this off and get to Friday, you actually only need really one of those things to happen. Any one of those things, a Zach Hyman game, a power play game, a dry cycle game. I don't know if a Nuge game is going to get you over the top, although you guys would love it. Mm -hmm. Any one of those things happening is enough to win one game. Yep. That's all we're talking about is win one game. And I know that that sounds hokey or cliche or whatever it is. That's actually... The reason why it's a cliche is because it's true. You need one game to force game six. And by that point, everything's going to flip right now. If you're the Panthers, you go eight to one. That's the easiest game to flush that we've ever had. Like no one's going to spend an extra second beat thinking about that game. It's not going to be about missed opportunities or hitting the post or whatever it might've been. No, you're going to be thinking about, okay, what does game five look like? And oh, by the way, we're up three to one in this series. Don't let anyone fool you. We are one win away from a Stanley Cup. So from Florida's perspective, it's easy. But we talked about Paul Maurice and mentioning desperation against desire. In 24 hours from now, or I guess more accurately, 30 hours from now, we could be talking about the Florida Panthers needing a lot more desperation than the Oilers in game six, because McDavid kind of planted the seed after game four. There's no pressure on us. The pressure was to not go out with a broom mm -hmm. to put yourself on the map. There's nothing embarrassing about losing to the Florida Panthers four to one in a series. This team's really good. It would be embarrassing losing in a sweep. They've mm -hmm. crossed that off. Now, whatever happens next, they could go down as the biggest legends ever. It would be, and I don't think this is, you know, hyperbole when you, and you said it, it would be the most significant comeback in NHL history. Biggest, biggest comeback. in an, it's, we're talking about the biggest comeback in the history of the sport. Yeah. It's happened once before in the Stanley cup final it was 80 years ago. <laughs> yeah. That is something. Uh, okay. Your appearance. Barely had the radio 80 years ago. <laughs> That's wild. It was, it was still the middle of World War II. Like most people, almost everyone that fought in World War II is dead. Mm -hmm. There actually happened to be one at the Panthers game the other night. Yeah, there was. Kick off the series. Incredible. Yeah. Uh, Frank's appearance is brought to you by the horses and horse racing Alberta. Um, Frank, I want to throw one more your way, but it does come in on our great clips inbox. So very quickly, with more than 4,400 hair salons throughout the United States and Canada, they're the world's largest hair salon brand, official hair salon of the NHL. For more info, check out greatclips.com. You can also use the Great Clips check-in app, see the wait time, check-in on your phone, get your haircut when you want. Great Clips, it's going to be great. Frank, I know we only got you for like another 60 seconds, but I wanted to ask you, this one from McDowell said, can you ask Frank if he thinks guys take less to stay with Edmonton? He mentioned a few names, but does this run the way the crowd's been, the atmosphere, the Oilers proving they're a legit contender? Does that bode well for them leading into like free agency? Well, can you throw the question back up again? Because I'll work through them one by one. Yeah. I feel like with Brown, he, I don't know if he's going to feel this way or not, but if I were in his shoes, I would say, with how long it took me to get up to speed and how much they overpaid me, I would feel like I would owe them for another year. That's not always how sports works. Um, but I do think he likes it there. And I think he's, he's shown his value, maybe not as a top six player, but he's shown the value that his speed has, especially in this postseason. Um, Yanmark, he's bounced around a bit. I'm sure probably what he's looking for more than anything is some security. I could see him taking less if the Oilers are willing to give him a little bit of term. 
DeHarnay, this is probably the one for a late bloomer, the one big payday he's going to get in his career if he can get it. So I don't think he's in a position to take less. And the fact that Broberg is has supplanted him and Broberg will definitely be in the top six next year, it's harder to see a path for the Oilers to want to overpay DeHarnay. And then Henrique is another guy that it's probably all about fit. He's made a pile of money in his career. He hasn't had an opportunity to win. This is his first time in the playoffs in like eight years, um, if not longer, that he, I'm, I'm sure that he wants an opportunity to win. And by all accounts, I think he's really liked it in Edmonton. I think, and you can kind of see how, you can see different scenarios how all four of them would fit into this team next season. Frank, you are back on the road heading down to Florida, and we will chat with you tomorrow from the Sunshine State. Appreciate your time, Frank Zervalli, for the horses at Horse Racing Alberta. Thanks, Frank. See you guys. Bye. There you go. Away he goes. What's up, Nation citizens? If you like that video, then you need to be subscribed to the Oilers Nation YouTube. Podcasts, live shows, exclusive interviews and analysis, everything you need from your favorite voices at Oilers Nation. And you don't want to miss any of it, so hammer that subscribe button.